The Mercedes-Benz EQS sedan has been the subject of much controversy, from its galactic shuttle styling to a high floor that actually makes the rear seats surprisingly cramped given the size of the vehicle. So if the sedan is just a little bit too out there design-wise, or you simply just need a little bit of extra space, the Mercedes-Benz EQS SUV just might be the droid that you're looking for. For more on the EQS SUV, click the link in the description for our full review. And as always, be sure to subscribe to the Motor One YouTube channel and find us on all of your favorite social media using the handle at MotorOne.com. That's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Now, let's get back to the review. Now there are lots of EQ specific design cues that carry over from the sedan to the SUV, starting up front where there's a big gloss black panel where you might usually expect to find a grill on an internal combustion vehicle. The center star on this vehicle is also illuminated, giving you just a little bit of extra panache at night. The same basic design also carries over with a sloping front end and the Mercedes EQ specific one bow shape, starting with this A pillar that intersects into the wheel well and stretches all the way back to a slightly more squared off D pillar. One thing that Mercedes gets right in terms of the EQS family's design are the details. For example, if you squint, you can see tons of tiny little Mercedes stars that are actually etched in from the backside of this gloss black grill panel. My other favorite design detail that carries through the entire Mercedes EQ lineup is the double helix taillight. The company says that it's intended to recall the filament of an Edison light bulb, which was the public's first experience with electricity, and now the Mercedes EQ family is the public's latest experience with electricity. Kind of clever. Overall though, I'm not sure if the EQS SUV does it for me. The EQS sedan is bold and unabashed and very futuristic, and that definitely turns some people off. So if that's how you feel, this car might be perfect because it dials back some of that ultra modernism just a little bit. For me though, I think the EQS sedan looks cool. So this one kind of just dials it back a little bit too much for me. It's not futuristic enough, but it's also not distinctive enough to really catch my eye. The EQS SUV is a little bit more universally appealing when you step inside, starting with the hyperscreen that spans the entire width of the dash on the 580 model that you see right here. But even beyond that, the materials in here are fantastic, starting with this matte finish wood trim for the center console, as well as available Napa leather upholstery that keeps everyone on board happy. There's also kind of an unusual texture to this simulated leather on the dash top and door panels that elevates the experience just a little bit. It's just, just surprising enough. I also can't get enough of the adjustable ambient lighting. I would live my entire life in the Malibu sunset colorway if I could. The hyperscreen on the dash does more than look pretty, however, comprising a 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster, a 17.8 inch center display, and a third 12.3 inch display right in front of the passenger, all hidden under one single sheet of glass. It looks really nice, and to my mind, it's more cleanly integrated than some of the sprouted tablet designs that you see on other cars, but it also has a lot of really great function baked in. For example, the center touchscreen is very easy to use, and although you do kind of block part of it when your hand is on the steering wheel, it's still pretty easy to get to the functions that you want to get to. The passenger screen is also genuinely useful. The co-pilot can do things like select navigation destinations or adjust vehicle and climate settings, but it can also be used for them to consume their own media through Bluetooth headphones. They can even watch TV on the screen as well. And there's a system that monitors whether the driver is looking over too much, and in that case, it will shut off the display to prevent distraction. Those excellent cabin materials I mentioned earlier coddle you in extreme comfort for the most part. As you can see, there's tons of space up front for me. I'm about six feet tall and I've got an abundance of headroom and the more upright driving position compared to the EQS feels a little bit more natural. That's especially true of the rear seat where you not only have a more upright driving position and better thigh support, but also a lot more headroom than the sedan. So you're not forced into nearly as hunched a position as you are in that vehicle if you're any more than six feet tall. The EQS SUV also offers a third row seat, but unless you're trying to carpool with a headless horseman, it's probably not gonna be of much use to you. It's also kind of a pain to climb back there too, because unless the car is completely empty, you have to squeeze through kind of a narrow aperture. If no one else is on board, the front row seats and the second row seats motor forward a little bit, giving you a bit more space to crawl through, but it's still not a super convenient situation. And then when all the seats are up, you only have seven cubic feet of cargo space, so it's really not intended to be 
a road trip machine for a big family. I'm not sure how, but the dimensionally smaller Model X has a Mary Poppins handbag of cargo space inside. It just is so massive, and you have a front trunk to look forward to as well, so you have even more storage space there. The suspension tuning is maybe a little bit odd because when it's in comfort mode, you do get a thick layer of cush, but you also kind of get a lot of vertical pogoing motions when driving over speed bumps. It's not a problem though, because you can always toggle over into sport mode, which removes some of that vertical motion without resorting to harshness. It's kind of a perfect balance, all things considered. The EQS SUV is also one of the quietest EVs I've been in in a very long time. Usually when you don't have a gas engine under the hood making all kinds of racket at 75 miles an hour, you start to notice a lot more tire roar and a lot more wind noise, but it's not really the case here. Mercedes has done a very good job of making sure the cabin is tranquil and hushed no matter how fast you're going. The base EQS 450 Plus gets a single rear-mounted electric motor with rear-wheel drive, giving it 355 horsepower and 419 pound-feet of torque. If you want 4MATIC all-wheel drive, then you add a second motor to the front of the vehicle that leaves power at the same but ups torque all the way up to 590 pound-feet. If you go for the Top Dog EQS 580, like I'm driving right now, you get a more powerful set of dual motors, giving you 536 horsepower and 633 pound-feet of torque. Now that might sound like a lot of power, and it definitely is, but the EQS SUV doesn't drive with the freneticism that you might expect from an electric car with all of that thrust on board. Instead, it's much more genteel in the way that it doles out power, especially if you have it in comfort or eco modes. It never feels overwhelming or intimidating to drive, even with all that 633 pound-feet of torque available at an instant. Instead, it kind of just pours itself down the road. It's really, really nice. Now, out here on this twisty, curving road, you can definitely tell that the EQS is working hard to keep body motions in check. There's not a ton of roll when you're digging into a corner like this one, and there isn't a lot of brake dive either, which is definitely a very good thing. But in spite of all of that good work that the EQS is doing, it's still no sports car. This is a very heavy vehicle, and the tires have a lot of weight to contend with when you're subjecting them to G-forces. So it's best to kind of dial back the pace just a little bit and enjoy the ride like you might in a Mercedes-Benz of old. The EQS SUV comes standard with 10 degrees of rear axle steering, which is a huge boon when you're driving slowly around a parking lot. It gives the car the turning radius of a much smaller crossover, which makes it feel very maneuverable and approachable. And while not too many people are expected to take their Mercedes EVs into the dirt, the EQS SUV does have a dedicated off-road mode that gives it just a little bit of extra ground clearance. I actually drove an EQS SUV on a very muddy off-road trail a couple of months ago, and I was genuinely impressed at how capable it was. Admittedly, it was wearing all-terrain tires, but the ground clearance and maneuverability from the rear axle steering system meant that it could tackle just about any obstacle I threw at it. Very impressive, even if you're never going to replicate that in the real world. If there's one significant drawback, dynamically speaking, to the EQS SUV, it would have to be the brakes. The regenerative braking system is very good, and to Mercedes' credit, they let you choose between three different levels of regen, including an intelligent mode, where the car kind of decides what regen's best for the situation, or a fully-on, one-pedal driving mode. The issue is, when the car's in regen, the brake pedal itself actually moves closer to the firewall, which feels very unnatural if you move your foot over to engage the friction brakes. Luckily, you can avoid the issue altogether by looking well ahead and using the one-pedal driving function effectively so you never have to touch the brake pedal again. You can also activate the EQS's litany of standard active safety features and driver assistance technologies. That includes Distronic Adaptive Cruise Control, Lane Centering Technology, Lane Departure Prevention, Lane Change Assistance, Blind Spot Monitoring, and more. Keep everything on and you're blessed with a very natural feeling suite of driver assistance. It spaces itself well on the lane, it takes into account the position of other vehicles in their lanes, it keeps yourself well distanced from the car in front, and it all just behaves very, very smoothly. I'm so impressed and I don't know why anyone would turn off these safety features, even if you're a Luddite who really prefers to do it all yourself. It just alleviates so much fatigue from the driving experience when it's done this well.
When it's time to pull over and replenish the battery, the Mercedes-Benz EQS SUV recharges at a rate of 200 kilowatts when using a DC fast charger. That charge rate is a little bit lower than both the Tesla Model X and the Rivian R1S, but it's still nothing to sneeze at in this day and age. And it gives the EQS SUV a 10 to 100% charge time of 31 minutes. On this more common 150 kilowatt charger, it's telling me that I'm gonna go from 35 to 100% in about 45 minutes, which is a perfect amount of time for me to go to the grocery store and run some errands before coming out to a fully charged battery. To maximize time between charges, the EPA rates both the EQS 450 4Matic and the EQS 580 at 285 miles of range. If you don't need all-wheel drive, the adequately powerful EQS 450 Plus can go 305 miles between charges. However, you will note that both the Tesla Model X and the Rivian R1S do a little bit better in terms of maximum range. Another nod to the Tesla and the Rivian is price. The Mercedes-Benz EQS SUV lineup starts at $105,550, whereas the Model X is right about $99,000, and the Rivian is even cheaper than that. Meanwhile, the EQS 580 starts at $127,100, and my tester carries an additional $22,000 in options for a total as tested price of $149,810. While you may miss out on maximum range and cargo space if you go the Benz route, at least you get way better fit and finish compared to a Tesla, as well as excellent, well-balanced road manners and Mercedes cachet. It's hard to ignore the EQS SUV's physical limitations at this price if you're looking for a family EV, but as an electrified status symbol, it's hard to beat, at least until the Mercedes Maybach EQS SUV arrives sometime in the future. Thanks for watching.